throw at you. You know, look, don't get mad at me. You know, I, I didn't write history. You know, I, I didn't, especially this part of history. I didn't write this, you know. But uh, the question that I like to put at you is, who has the better favor, a friend or a servant, a friend or a slave? Who has the better luck? Now, th there's another thing, too. You know, now, during the course of this uh, short dissertation here, if you feel like you are being slapped on the other cheek you know hey look don't don't get mad at me again don't get mad at me and you know figure like hey look i'll just haul off and and, and slam this guy you know uh if anything do like jesus said just turn the other cheek because uh you probably got another one coming so as you might have already guessed uh being an intelligent person uh, our subject today is friend or slave Friend or slave. This is a time when you wish that even men carried those little makeup mirrors. You know, those little round ones, like two and a half inches or whatever the kind. You can look directly in your face and, and that's about it. Even the men need to have one right now because the question needs to be asked of oneself to oneself. Am I a friend of Christ Jesus, a friend of God, or am I a slave? Do I have a friendship, a bond, a fellowship and relation with him as a friend, or am I a slave who is whipped and beat and coerced and you name it, all of the bad things in life that can happen to a human being happens to uh, so that I will provide honorable or acceptable service as a slave to God. Let's take a short and uh, let's just say a brief moment of our lifetime here and explore what we've been saying about ourselves, who we are uh, claiming to be, uh, how we feel about ourselves, because as you know, out of one's mouth flows the issues of life. So what is our issue? Make no mistake. This is not a racist or uh, what do you call it uh, prejudicial uh, issue. So without further ado, let's get some exploring underway here. In 1841, as a matter of fact, it was June the 27th, 1841, four shipwrecked sailors of Japanese descent disembarked in Honolulu, Hawaii from a New England uh, vessel. Uh, those were the first, I would say, the earliest recorded uh, Japanese immigrants or uh, people of Japanese descent that had um, came into the territory known as the United States of America. Then it wasn't until the early 1900s that more Japanese uh, people migrated to America and they began their immigration in the state of Hawaii. They weren't brought in as slaves or indentured servants um, and certainly there's a lot more honorable history uh, to their migration to this nation. But that's not what we're uh, wanting to discuss at this particular time with you. What I want to talk about, again, is uh, either you're a slave or you're a friend. Friend or slave. Now, prior to the beginning of the immigration of uh, our Japanese culture, uh, blacks, 
from Africa arrived in southern USA. And that was in the early 1600s. Now, let's move forward a minute and let's come on up another couple hundred years. It was in maybe, uh, I would say, around the 1860s during that time frame that blacks began learning to read the Bible. At this point, you might wonder, Preacher, where the heck are you going with this? You're talking to us about Japanese immigration. Now you're talking to us about black people coming to the USA, you know, in the 1600s and learning to read the Bible in the 1800s. Where are you going with it? What's the contrast? What, 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 where are you going with this? Well, I told you in the beginning that this is not uh, a matter of ethnic or ethnicity. It's not a racially motivated issue. It's, it's real simple. On one hand, uh, one of my Japanese constitu uh, constituents says, uh, I'm a friend of God. On the other hand, uh, one of my Negro or black, American black associates says, I'm a servant of God. Whoa, wait a minute. Now, let's, let's examine this. So what I'm understanding is this, and you might understand the same thing because I'm sure that uh, you have either referred to yourself uh, as a servant uh, or you have heard someone else refer to themselves as a servant. And uh, we want to know where, where is it coming from? Is it coming from days of slavery? Because I'll be honest with you, the Bible supports both uh, causes. It, it supports slavery and it supports uh, the, the freedom. So wh where is this coming from? Holy Ghost filled black Americans, children of ex-slaves, claim to be servants, and I put that in quotations, servants of God, whereas my Japanese buddies claim to be friends of God. Now, the question is, which one are you? Because you can only be one or the other. You can't be both. You can only be one. You can't be a friend and a servant. You can't be a servant and a friend. They both carry different measures. They have a different weight. They have different responsibilities. And they have different rewards. So which one are you? Are you a servant of God? Or are you a friend of God? You see... A friend promotes, lifts up one, whereas a servant provides for, grants needs, handles issues that the master would dare handle themselves. A friend remains abreast of their associates desires and wishes and plans and considers themselves to be a part of it a part of its success whereas a servant is ignorant of the master's plans and only knows what it is told to do the servant is not responsible feels no responsibility towards their own well-being or care. Friend or servant, which one are you? Are you a friend of God's? Or are you a servant of God? Do you fall in the category of friendship as Christ Jesus explained it? Or are you a mere servant? In the book of Exodus, the 33rd chapter, we find that God would speak unto Moses and he would speak with Moses face to face. Hence, Moses was referred to as the friend of God. And if you will recall, Moses had never 
been known to be a slave. So as a friend of God, Moses promoted, let me say that again, as a friend of God, Moses promoted the will of God, the way of God. We find that historically documented in the Torah, the first five books of the Old Testament known as the books of Moses. And in those books, we find the will of God, the way of God. These we refer to as the laws of God. We find the whens, the hows, the whats, and the consequences for not obeying those laws of God. All of these laws were written by a man who was known as a friend of God to the people of God who were also to be called the friend of God. As a matter of fact, it wasn't until those people who were known to be friends of God began to ignore the laws of God and to heed themselves to the options of sin that they became enslaved to other men who did not worship God and they began to take on the customs and traditions of these various peoples who were not the friends of God and they began to understand the true meaning of being a slave. Again, we're talking about friend or slave. Friend of God or slave of God. Which one are you? Need I remind you, Jesus didn't come to establish slaves. He didn't come to reestablish uh, the orders or the ordinances of slavery, which his people had been set free from. Instead, he came that all men might have life. He came to set the captives free. What captives were he, are we talking about? We're talking about those of mankind who, as we have been and are, some of us still are, captive to sin, captive to that which is disobedient or against the rules and laws of God. Jesus came to set man free, to give us life, not to create slaves. Now, those of you who are still treading out the wine press of slavery might still hold on to Deuteronomy, the 10th chapter and the 20th verse, where it says, Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, him shalt thou serve. And then you have those who are yet meandering about the cotton fields of the South and you might be still holding on to uh, Luke, the fourth chapter, and the eighth verse, uh, having uh, forgotten or maybe having not even known that it was in this very verse where Christ was scolding Satan and told Satan, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. Ignorantly, you hold on to the word serve in one definition, and that's because you have not been set free by the blood of the Lamb. You're not a free man or free woman in Christ Jesus. You are still shackled. To sin. Upon thy neck you still bear the yoke of bondage to sin. Sin being that 
which is against the will of God. And though you understand the power of God, yet you refuse to step onto the dry land, the path through the Red Sea that God has provided for you so that you may leave the power of Egypt and the sin therein and that you may come out from among them who are abominable and set your affections on things above, things that are not of this world, but that which is eternal through Christ Jesus our Lord. See, until you are determined not to swim in the murky water, until you have determined to come out from among them, stop trying to get along with them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, you cannot be called a friend of God. You cannot meet the criteria that Jesus set as he spoke to us in St. John, the 15th chapter, uh, between the 14th and 15th verse. He says, you are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Now, if Jesus called you his friend, what in the world are you running around here talking about, I'm a servant? Oh, I get it. I get it, uh, since we now have the freedom to become all wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up in world politics and uh, the conditions uh, which uh, supervise and, 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 and give authority to uh, entities and conditions that control our social matters as we live among those who worship not God, we uh, are losing sight and losing focus on being a friend of God. Therefore, we have backslidden into the condition or status of a slave, one who knoweth not the will of their master, one who is not able to promote the good will of God, one who is only knowledgeable of his existence, but lacking the power of his reality. No relationship. Christ Jesus came to a bunch of slaves, a bunch of people bound in sin. He came in the good will of God to set us free. So why then are we still claiming the status of slavery rather than one who has been set free and is now able to promote the good will of God, to promote the being of God, to promote the power of God, to promote the way of God, to feel a part of it, to exist and to be blessed by being a part of His will, His way. Why? I'm going to let you think of it.